This is Pastor Mike Bruno of Bible Christian Center in Slipper Rock. First of all, I'd like to extend an invitation to you if you're in the Slipper Rock area to come to our service Sunday 1030 at the Slipper Rock Park Building. And also, as you're ready to enter in and, and listen to the Word of God regarding this service, I want to share with something with you I believe will be of great help to you. Everything we do at Abba Christian Center is in the context of intimacy with Jesus Christ. God wants you to know this. He died not just so you could have eternal life, but that His life will become your life. What do I mean by that? 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, He's called you to partake of His glory and virtue of His divine nature. It means that the very faith of God, He, he wants it to be in you. Romans 12, 3, uh, Galatians 2, 20, the very love of God uh, that caused Him to die for you. He wants that same love to be in you. Romans 5, 5. He wants the very life intrinsic to his own being because you're his literal child. He wants his life, glory to God, to become your life. He wants his faith to be your faith, his love to be your life, his wisdom be your wisdom, his compassion to be your compassion. You say that's almost too good to be true. I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is too good to be true for your mind. That's why he's given you a heart to believe, I trust that with your heart you'll enter into the message today knowing that he died that his life might become your life. Let's look at the scriptures relating to the resurrection of Jesus. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. Let, let me turn there first. It's a very powerful scripture because you see Jesus based everything he did on the reality of him going to be raised from the dead. And of course, it was the Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead. But in Romans 1, 4, it says, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Now, we could spend a lot of time right there on this scripture. You see, the reason that Jesus was able to be raised from the dead was according to the spirit of holiness because Jesus was holy. Jesus was the only person that ever lived that was fully holy, fully righteous, fully perfect. And because of that, glory to God, the spirit of God himself raised Jesus from the dead. He did, Jesus didn't need someone to pray for him to be raised from the dead like he raised Lazarus or the, uh, the in Luke 7, 15, the, the widow's son or, or the little girl in, in Mark chapter 5 where he said, Talitha Kumai. No, he was raised because of his perfection and because he satisfied the requirements of Father God so we could enter into not just eternal life, but victory in this life. Glory to God. All right, with that said, let's go to Luke chapter 24. Each of the gospels shares an account of the resurrection, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but let's read from Luke 24. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the leaven and to the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things to the apostles. Mm, all right. Now let's go down to verse 13. It says, Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three miles. They talked together of what had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself, the resurrected Christ, drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And they said unto, and he said unto them, What manner, what are you talking about? What you know, one to another. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answered, said unto them, Are thou the 
only person in Jerusalem who has not known the things which have come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? They said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trust that it had been he that should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels and said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said, but they saw him not. And he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. See, everything that Jesus did in his life was prophesied from his birth. Isaiah 7, 14, being born of a virgin. Isaiah 9, 6, being the son of God. Micah 5, 2, being born in, in Bethlehem. Everything he did was prophesied. It, it's, oh my goodness, the prophetic uh, scriptures are just amazing. And they were what uh, was, they were utilized by the apostle Paul to bring many to faith in Christ. Glory to God in the early church, and we need to utilize these prophecies today. And it says this, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village which where they went, and, and he made as though he would have gone farther. See, he pretended like he was going to go to see if they wanted him to stay. Mm, that'll preach right there. Many times Jesus wants to know how much you want him to be with you. But they constrained him saying, abide with us. It's toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went to tarry with them. And it came to pass as he sat up meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us? While he talked with us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scriptures. Glory to God. And they arose the same hour, returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and then that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And they shared how they saw him in the breaking of the bread. Glory to God. And as they stood there telling them of what they saw, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. And said, peace be unto you. Behold my hands and my feet. Glory to God. All right. That the, the, they have pierced. Oh, glory to God. I love that verse where it says, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened unto us the scriptures? God wants you to read the scriptures in a way that man, I tell you, your heart burns within you. He wants the scriptures to be open to you by the resurrected Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to trust him to do that. Glory to God. There's so much here, so much here. You know, the Bible says in the book of Acts that Satan was not strong enough to keep Jesus in the grave. Can you imagine the demons that were assigned to keep Jesus in the grave? They're probably thinking, there is no way. I mean, they, they were there. But the Bible said Jesus, glory to God, could not in any way be held by whether it was a stone uh, uh, you know, in regards to the, the grave or by any demons or the devil himself. No one could keep Jesus in the grave. And I'm here to tell you this. When we walk in resurrection power, nobody can keep you from rising up unto victory. I'm going to say that again. No one could keep Jesus in the grave. Not a man, not a stone, not a devil. Nobody. And I'm here to tell you this. As we enter into the truth of the gospel, no one can keep you and I as well in bondage, because we will rise as well with resurrection power. All right. That's what I want to look at most. So to do so, let's go to Ephesians 1. Glory to God. And uh, we're going to look at, see, it's one thing to say, I know that Jesus arose. 
I know I believe that, you know, he was raised from the dead. Glory to God. And, and that's a key, obviously, because, you know, our faith, all of Christianity rests on the reality of him rising from the dead. Amen. We don't serve, you know, all the religions of the earth, man, they serve somebody that's dead. They, they you know, they have tombs where they're, they're at. You know what I'm saying? You know, Muhammad's dead. Krishna is dead. You know what I'm saying? Buddha is dead. I'm here to tell you something. Our Savior is a risen Savior. He is alive. Glory to God. All right. But see, it's one thing for you to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. It's an entirely another thing to enter into the revelation of what that means to you personally and the context of being empowered to have eternal life and to live in great victory in this life. Glory to God. So we can enter into to that reality. Let's look at the scriptures. Let the scriptures really burn in our hearts so we can have the same excitement. Glory to God than the disciples of Emmaus had when Jesus opened to them the scriptures. Like I said, Easter, I understand is celebrated, you know, uh, in the March, beginning of April, middle of April, you know, a, a, annually. But Easter, is to be resurrection is to be celebrated every day of your life. I love Christmas. I love Easter because it causes us to to concentrate glory to God on the reality of, of the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, and on the resurrection of Jesus. At the same time, it's just not a once a year thing that we celebrate. We need to celebrate Christmas and Easter daily. Glory to God in integrating the reality of Emmanuel in us, the resurrection power of God in us. Glory to God. All right. So to do so, again, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. Uh, really, let's start with uh, verse 17. It's, Paul prayed that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you. Now, again, you need to personalize the scriptures. Will give unto you the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding, or some translations say the mind of your spirit being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. I believe that's a hope of glory. What the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. That's, that's saying the heart of God towards you. And then, what is the exceeding greatness, or in, in, in verse 19, now if you have your Bible, Ephesians 1, 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe now, glory to God, according to the working of his power, which God wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. And the church is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the three things that God wanted wants us to understand is what we're here for, the hope of glory. Christ is in you now, the hope of glory. What's that mean? It means that God wants you to enter in to having the same desires that Jesus had. The desire to please the Father, the desire to glorify Him, the desire to, to walk in victory. Glory to God. And He wants you to know the heart of God towards you. And lastly, He wants you to know that the resurrection power that was manifested to raise Jesus from the dead is now your lifeline. Glory to God. Because it's only through resurrection power that you can live your life today. I'm going to say that again. He wants you to know that the resurrection power that caused Jesus to rise is your lifeline. It is that which enables you to live daily in victory and in intimacy with God. Amen. All right. So let's, now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Glory to God. I'll tell you, the book of Ephesians, well, every verse in the Bible is amazing. 
But the book of Ephesians, I, I tell you, it is just, oh man, it's just without rival. Glory to God. Now in Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says this, and the first three verses, it shares with us, man, that we were bound for hell. That, you know, it tells us that, you know what, we walked according to the course of this world, verse 2, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit now that works in the children of disobedience. Every person that's unsaved, you might think you're free, but really, you're not free. Your master is the enemy, the prince of the power of the air, and the things that you do are the things that he wants you to do. And in verse 3, it says, and among whom also we had our uh, life and times passed in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we are by nature evil, the children of wrath. Mm. But here's what I want to emphasize now in the context of brother. It says, but God who is rich in mercy, for his great love or with he loved us. Listen to this. Even when we were dead in our sins, all right, or not even born yet, you know, those of us who are alive today, he quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace to us and his love towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves as the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Jesus, and the good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, this sounds crazy, doesn't it? It says even before you were alive, God knowing that you were going to enter in the sin and would be in bondage to sin and you would have a destiny in hell. So what he did in the context of his grace and his supernatural wisdom and power, the Bible says that you died with him. What's that mean? It, it means that Jesus, according to the scripture of Mark 14, 33 and 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it, it says he who knew no sin, it says he became like you. He became sin. He entered into experiencing you in your evil state, even though he never sinned, of course, he tasted of your sin. He just not only identified with your sin, but became sin, actually tasted of what it was like to be you in your sinfulness so he could cause your sinfulness to be purged and you, your sinful nature to be destroyed. I share it like this. It's just that, you know, we all heard of killer bees. There's different species of bees. But if enough killer bees, you know, they sting you, you will die. But in the process, the bees die. They lose their power. Jesus let the sting of sin enter into him. And that's why he suffered infinitely. The thing he hated most was sin, and that's what he had to experience. Your sin, your sinfulness. But in the process, sin died. That's why the Bible says, I've been crucified with Christ. My sinfulness died. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And the life now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Glory to God. Now listen to this. But the Bible said he not only destroyed our sinfulness. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 9 that he destroyed every work of the devil. But not only destroyed every work of the devil, he destroyed, not only destroyed our sinfulness, you can sense my excitement, but then he put in us his righteousness. He put in us his DNA, his life. I, I tell you, that is so good. We just got to read it. Glory to God. 1 John 3, 9. It is amazing. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. It's just an amazing verse. It says, uh, mm, Jesus, 
Well, verse 8, he that commits sins are the enemy, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the sin nature and the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. Now listen to this. Because his seed, his own DNA remains in us because we're born of God. Wow, through the new birth. So what happens is, so we died with him, then we were raised with him, and the Bible says that now he now sits at the right hand of the Father, and the Bible says we're in him. 1 Timothy 2.5 says there's one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Christ Jesus. Right now, at the right hand of the Father, Jesus is God Almighty, the I Am, the second person of the Trinity, but supernaturally, he is also the man, Christ Jesus, meaning that he is the second Adam, meaning that right now, when God the Father looks at Jesus as a man, he sees, hallelujah, you as a victor, as you free from sin, free from harm, free from sickness, free from shame, free from condemnation, free from inability, free from selfishness and unfruitfulness. And see, the Bible says he's there at the right hand of the Father for this purpose, that in the ages to come that you're living in now, he might manifest through his grace the exceeding riches of his grace in you. See, that's why the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who infuses the light from Jesus in me. What's it mean? It means that when you say, okay, God, I, I feel weak. I feel like this familiar sin is going to overtake me. But God, I believe that this sinful, this sin has been destroyed. I believe that I'm in you, the man Christ Jesus, someone that's free from this sin. When we claim that I can do all things through Christ, when we claim that uh, glory to God, well, let's just get to it right now in Romans 8, 11. When we claim that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in me, whoo, and he's now always in me to cause resurrection fire, resurrection life, to destroy that which would come against me that would harm me and bring forth the life of Jesus. When we claim that, when we speak that, when we worship God as we speak it, when we expect it as we speak it, you know what happens? Woo, the Father said, man, I've been waiting for you to speak it. I've been waiting for you to say it. This is why I sent my son to die. I'm looking at him right now. And when I see him, I not only see him as the second person of the Trinity, I see glory to God. I see you. Woo, hallelujah in him, the second Adam. And then as you proclaim the reality of who you are in Christ, now the righteousness of God in Christ. He who knew no sin became sin that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Now the Holy Ghost in you manifest the purity, the love, the wholeness, the healing. Woo, glory to God. The power of Jesus himself. Glory to God when he walked the earth 2,000 years ago. That's why Paul said in Philippians 1.21, says, for me to live is Christ. That's why Galatians 2.20 said, it's not us who live, but Christ. That, that is the whole message of the New Testament. Woo, glory to God. See, if you enter into that, your heart will burn daily with the scriptures that we just shared. I tell you, I look at these verses every day. They are amazing. They are exceedingly amazing, as the scripture just says in, in Ephesians 2, 7. Shh. Glory to God. All right, let's go to Ephesians 3. To, uh, you know, the, the Bible says that to confirm every truth with two or three witnesses. Let's go to our, our next witness. And Lord, we already have given more than three, but let's go to this next witness in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. It says that God will grant you, again, you personalize it, put your name in there. He would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Well, what, what, what's that mean? See, it means because in Christ Jesus, 
the riches, I mean of his glory, anything honestly that's good that you can desire, the, the hope within you for glory, the riches of this glory is in the man Christ Jesus. And you see, our life is in the man Christ Jesus and the life within the man Christ Jesus is manifested through the Holy Ghost and resurrection power. I mean, if you ever get that and I ever get that in fullness, we will walk in a way that's just not just supernatural, but it's amazingly supernatural. Glory to God. And it says that, okay, he would grant you according to, that's important, that's an important expression. He would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that you might walk in the fullness of faith and love. The faith that he walked in. The love that he walked in. Glory to God. Now, now listen to me. These scriptures, this scripture is amazing. You see, in Isaiah chapter 11, it talks about the sevenfold spirit that was on Jesus. Glory to God. It says, no, this is turned there, Isaiah chapter 11. You see, it's so, it's so neat because I just turned right to it, praise God. The apostle Paul was somebody that studied at the feet of Gamaliel. He knew the scriptures. And so much in the New Testament, he, you know, God uses this knowledge of the scriptures in the Old Testament to bring it into the light of the new, glory to God. Isaiah 11, the Bible says that, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a bridge shall grow out of his roots. And this, this is talking about Jesus, of course. And the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. That's, that's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of resurrection. And it's the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding. Glory to God. That's what brings faith. The Spirit of counsel and might. Keep that word in mind. The Spirit of might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. See, the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and might. The Holy Ghost and power. Power and might are interchangeable. And now, and this is of course one of the main prophetic scriptures regarding the Messiah, Isaiah 11, as is Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 61. And now God is saying because Jesus <clears throat> has destroyed your sin nature, has imparted the DNA of the Father into you, and now is at the right hand of the Father, glory to God, you being in him, that the very faith and love that he walked into, that he walked in as a man on the earth, through the Holy Ghost, you and I are able to walk in as well through the resurrection power that raised him from the dead. Glory to Jesus. So when someone says, well, I, I can't forgive that person, it's such a lie. Because you see, Jesus did not have a problem with forgiveness. And his love that causes him to forgive when he walked to earth is now in you through the spirit of mind. Glory to God. The same spirit that was on him as part of the sevenfold spirit that he walked in. This same sevenfold spirit is alluded to in, in Revelations 1.10 when it talks about the seven spirits before the, the throne of God. And it's alluded to again in the book of Revelation. Uh, we, there's so much here. So much here. Glory to God. All right, let, let's go to Romans 8 now. I, I mean, but I, I, again, I, before we do that, I need to reiterate Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. It's amazing. It says right now as we believe, resurrection power manifests for us. It manifests in us. It manifests through us. It manifests for us. Glory. And Ephesians 2 tells us how this came about. 
that even when we were before we were alive, even when, when God knew that we were going to be encased in our sinfulness and, and, and going to hell, he made provision for us through Jesus dying as us, not just dying for us, but dying as us. And then causing us to be quickened together with him, made alive the very DNA of God, hallelujah, now being put in us and then causing us to sit with him in the heavenly places that the Holy Ghost might manifest us in him in the heavenlies on the earth here today. I know there's a lot there, but it is Easter. It is resurrection. It is while we celebrate, while we have communion, glory to God. It is so exceedingly, amazingly glorious. Glory to God. Wow. Glory to God. All right, we're going to read Romans 8, different passages, and then we're going to go back to Ephesians 3.20. There is so much here. And then we're going to look at how we apply this to our own lives. And Romans chapter 8, it, 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 it's so amazing. We just got to read. I, I mean, it, it's so hard not to not to read it. So we, we just got to. I mean, I know time's at a premium, but I mean, it is just so amazing. You just can't help read it daily and I'll read it over and over again. Glory to God. Why would you read Romans 7? when it talks about when you were dead in your sins and not read Romans 8, when it talks about you being alive unto God. Woo, hallelujah. It says in Romans 8, and you can tell my, my Bible, if you look at it, you, you can tell it's hard for me to read because I've gone over it so many times. But in Romans 8, and that's why I have it memorized. It says, there's therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Who, who, hallelujah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Holy Spirit. For the law, whoo, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Man, just say that. God did. Sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh as the sin offering condemning sin in the flesh, destroying the sin nature, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh in our own strength, but after the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say, man, that the, the mind, you know, the people that are religious, the people that are unsaved, man, they set their minds on their own strength. But, but those of us who are Christian, we set our minds on the Holy Spirit because that's our lifeline. And it says the mind set, set on the flesh, you know, your own strength without God is destruction no matter how religious you are. But the mind set on the Holy Spirit is life and peace. It goes on to say, though the body be dead because of sin, the spirit's alive because of righteousness. But here's the verse we want to get to. Woo, glory to God. Well, let's, it says, but you're not in the flesh. But you're in the Spirit, glory to God, because the Spirit of God dwells in you. And look at verse 11. It says, but if the Spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead will also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that indwells you. That is the verse of the New Testament. That is the key to the life of the believer. And we're going to look in, in the ensuing verses and how that works. Glory to God. You see, the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of resurrection, the Spirit of glory, is in you if you're born again. Man, if you're not born again, honestly, come on, get born again. Don't be foolish. Quit trying to live this life on your own strength when it's futile and will only lead to eternal damnation. Man, receive Jesus now. Glory to God. So the same, now let's, let's keep reading. So it says, therefore, when you see the, 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 the word therefore, ask yourself, what's the therefore, therefore? It says, therefore, brethren, we're... I'm not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh. We're not to live like the Romans 7 paradigm, 
the Romans 7 man. For if you live after the flesh, you will die. But if through the spirit you do destroy the deeds of the body, you will live. What's that mean? It means when men, you feel unable. Man, you're weak. You're strong. Because the spirit of God will rise up within you when you claim that you've died unto sin and the sin that's trying to come against you, whether it's selfishness, whether it's anger and revenge, uh, whether it's pornography, whether it's fear, whether it's shame, whether whatever it is, the Spirit of God will rise up within you and cause you to destroy that image, destroy that thought, to destroy that seeming reality of weakness and bring you into a place where you can say, no, 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 this is not who I am. I am strong in Christ. I'm not a person of pornography. I'm a person of purity. I'm not a person of unforgiveness. I'm a person of forgiveness. I'm not a person. Glory, man, you say, man, I'm not somebody that's sick and dying. I'm someone that's alive and being raised up. Glory to God. I'm not somebody that's unfruitful. I'm somebody that can do the works of God according to John 14, 12. This is how you enter in the victory. See, because it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, that word led means to be quickened, to be left, to be infused into by the Spirit of God. This is the children of God. See, he's saying, here's what it means to be a Christian. Not that you do it on your own strength, but you do it by believing in the strength of God that will manifest in you, to you, and through you, and for you. This is what it means to be a Christian. To live by the spirit of God within you to live by the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. Wow. See, that's what Ephesians 1, 19 to 23 is about. That's what Ephesians 2, 5 to 7 is about. That's what Ephesians 3, 16 and 17 is about. That's what the gospel is about. Woo, and is that not good news? That is exceedingly good news. That's news that causes you to shout. That's news that causes you to cling to Jesus. That's news that causes you to worship him. That's news that causes you to tell others about him. Woo, man, so many people don't share their faith because they don't understand what their faith entails. But when you understand what your faith entails, that's when you're gonna share it with a lost and dying world. But we first have to share it with the body of Christ. But it goes on to say in verse 15, because you're living through the resurrection power of Jesus, because you're living through the spirit of grace. See, grace is the divine ability of God that comes to you through the Holy Spirit. It's unmerited and it's divine. It says because of this reality, you don't have to fear. See, if I'm struggling to receive from God, whether it's finances that I need to support my family, whether it's a healing for my body, whether it's power to overcome a familiar sin, and I don't understand the grace of God, the spirit of resurrection, I'm gonna fear. I'm gonna fear not having the faith I need. I'm going to fear not having the strength I need. I'm going to fear not having the provision I need. But because the provision is present through the spirit of resurrection, through the Holy Spirit himself, I don't have to fear. So when I feel like I can't believe, the Holy Spirit will enable me to believe. He'll take away and burn up that which would cause me not to believe those things, those wrong images, those bad experiences, who bring me into the faith of his son. Man, when I feel so weak and unable and emotionally, I just feel like, man, I feel overwhelmed. I can't go on. I feel depressed. He rises up within me as on eagle's wings. 
and he causes the depression to be burnt up, the weakness to be burnt up. Even as I confess I'm strong, even as I confess that the power of resurrection is within me and resurrection life brings strength, deliverance from uh, impurity and it causes me to enter into provision. So I don't have to fear. And I don't have to fear when I die not going to heaven because I'm going to go to heaven because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead has caused me to be born again. Man, that's the greatest miracle that it is. It's through resurrection power that your evil nature was taken away. It's through resurrection power that the DNA of God was put into you. It's through resurrection power that you were born again. And it's through resurrection power not only that you were born again, but you can walk with Jesus in. Glory to God. So he says, man, you've not been given the spirit of bondage again to fear because you have provision through the resurrection power of Jesus. Now listen to this. So you haven't received the spirit of fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Wow, God's not just delivered you from fear. He's caused you to enter into an intimacy with the Father that is infinite. The same intimacy that Jesus has with the Father, you now have. Because the resurrection power of Jesus has destroyed your sinfulness and has made you righteous, even through the gift of righteousness. We say this all the time, but I never get tired of saying it. Where there's blood, there's oil. Jesus shed his blood. Glory to God. So you could enter in to being given the spirit of grace, the gift of righteousness, through the oil, the fire, the power of resurrection of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. It goes on to say in Romans 8, 16, the Holy Spirit, again, the Romans 8 is all about the Spirit of God in you, the Spirit of resurrection. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, our born-again spirit, that we're children of God. Man, there's a witness. You know what? I, I, man, you know, a lot of you know that I, I direct a counseling center. I'm in court different times representing kids that have been abused so they don't get abused again, so they don't enter into situations where they're going to be abused again. And a lot of times I'm what you call an expert witness because I have uh, certain degrees, master's degree in clinical psychology, that type of deal. And I'm a witness. And I'll get on the stand and I'll say, you know what? I, I'm a witness to the fact that this little boy or this little girl, if they go into this situation, they're going to be harmed again. I'm a witness. But I'm going to tell you something. And the judge says, okay, I accept your witness. And glory to God, kids are released from harm. But I'm going to tell you something. There's one that is the witness. Woo, hallelujah. He's the spirit of witness. He witnesses with your spirit that you're a child of the living God. He witnesses with your spirit that you're strong when you don't feel that you're able. He witnesses through your spirit that you have faith when you feel unbelieving. He witnesses with your spirit that you're healed when you're sick. He witnesses with your spirit that you're able to share the gospel when you don't think you can. He witnesses to you that you're the father and the mother you can be. Glory to God when you're struggling with your kids. He witnesses to you that the love of God is within you but shed abroad in your heart hearts when you don't feel like it is and you can't forgive. He is the witness. Woo, glory. And the Bible says this, if he witnesses to you that you're a child of God, he will witness also that you're an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. If so be we suffer with him, it means that we're laying down our life, that we're living like we should, sharing the gospel, loving him, that we may be, now listen to this, that we may be also glorified together. You see, Christ is in you the hope of glory. Glory is simply the desires that Jesus had in him being in you. 
It's the desire to please the Father. The desire, you know, to, to, you know, to be married and have children, you, you know, in the sense that, you know, that, that God has that for you. The desire to walk in purity. The desire to walk in wholeness, free of bipolar, free of, of cancer, free. Oh my, of anything that would dominate you, the enemy. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Christ is in you the hope of glory. And you see, because he's in you, this glory will be manifested to you through the spirit of glory. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Resurrection. He's called the Spirit of Glory. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. See, our life is to be joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ooh, resurrection leads to glory. The Bible says in Romans 8, 11, it was the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead. And Romans 6, 4, it says it was the spirit of glory that raised Jesus from the dead. So as we enter in, glory to God, you know, to integrating this into our lives in, in a pragmatic fashion, in a practical way. Man, that's what it's all about. Glory to God. You see, the Holy Spirit can take any person on the face of the earth, no matter what they've been through. I don't care if they've been trafficked. I, I don't care if they've committed a grave sin. I don't care what their upbringing was, their, their education level. And he will cause you to enter in the resurrection power, the faith of Jesus and the love of Jesus. As I shared in, in our last session at Abba Christian Center, man, he will destroy false images through his word and by his resurrection power. And man, when, man he'll destroy generational curses of unbelief. He will destroy anything that will harm you. Anything and everything. Glory to God. And he does that through his love and mercy, through his patience. But when you fall down, he picks you up. When it seems like, man, there's something in your head that says, you know what? I can't make it. I, I just isn't working for me. He rises up and says, it will work for you because you're my child. He is able to burn up Everything that would cause you to not walk in faith, to not walk in love, no matter what you've experienced. Now, I was ministering to somebody recently. And man, their father had died from a certain heart condition. Their grandfather had died from this heart condition. They, the great-grandfather had died from this heart condition. And now they have every symptom of this heart condition. And you can imagine, and this guy, honestly... He was an engineer, very scientifically minded, and he's saying, come on, I mean, I'm going to die. And I said, there's a greater law than the law of the natural. There is natural law, and natural law is good. I mean, when you see a car coming towards you, you don't cross the street. You know what I'm saying? That's good natural law. When natural law negates the law of the spirit of life, then we believe that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will supersede and negate the natural law. And I said, there's another law that's greater than the law of your natural mind. And I said this, and I think this will help you because it's helped me. Because I said, I know you're a Christian. I, I know that you're a believer. And I said, I know you even believe in healing. He said, you know, I believe in healing, but man, my natural mind is so strong. I, I, I know I watched my dad die. I watched my grandfather die. Now I got every symptom he has that, that they had in me. And I said, but I'm here to tell you this. 
You agree with God, not through your natural mind and mental assent. You agree with God through the mind of your spirit. You see, your spirit man, your physical man, is just the mirror of your spirit man. Your spirit man has a mind. Your spirit man, glory to God, hallelujah, has ears. That's how you hear the voice of God. You don't hear the voice of God through your natural ears and you don't believe God through your natural mind. I said, you need to do this. You need to tell your natural mind, which is part of your soul. Your soul is your mind, your natural mind, your natural personality, your natural willpower. You need to tell your natural mind that your natural mind is superseded by the mind of your spirit. You see, that's why God prayed in in Ephesians 1, 17, that the mind of your spirit would be enlightened. The entrance of his word giveth light to the mind of your spirit. Just like somebody, they're born a new baby. In their, man, their mind is cultivated by knowledge and it grows and grows and grows and they might be a great scientist. Well, glory to God, the mind of your spirit grows through the word of God and through the mercy of God and through the power of his resurrection. Through the resurrection of mind, he causes your spirit to grow. And I said, right now, I'm going to ask you to pray something. I'm going to ask you to confess something with me. I'm going to ask you to confess that the mind of your spirit is truth and truth is greater than facts. See, your natural mind lives by facts. The mind of your spirit lives by truth. And truth is greater than facts. Glory to God. I said, I'm going to ask you to confess that because you're born again through the spirit of might, through the spirit of resurrection, that God is enabling you to see right now that the mind of your spirit context God who is spirit and because you not have agreement with God's spirit to spirit natural law the natural mind is negated and that curse that was on your dad granddad great granddad is not on you and you're free and you're healed and you know what see when he did that woo, when anybody does that Life comes, and, he, and I want you to say this with me right now. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're believing for. This is applicable to what you're going through and believing. Say right now, say, Father God, I believe through the blood of Jesus, through the new birth, that my spirit is now yours like your spirit. It's the righteousness of your spirit. My spirit believes. The mind of my spirit knows that I'm whole, that I'm blessed, that I'm accepted in the beloved, that I have eternal life, that I'm healed, that I'm loved. I proclaim right now, I decree the decree. See, the decree is that you have the mind of Christ. I decree the decree. I I say right now with my mouth, that the mind of my spirit knows that I'm healed, that I'm accepted, that I'm loved. And right now, Father, I choose to live by the mind of my spirit in the law of the spirit of life rather than the law of sin and death through my natural mind. Say that with me right now. Say, I choose to live by the mind of my spirit through the spirit of life And I choose not to live by the natural mind that brings the law, mm, the law of death. Glory to God. You see, when you said that, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of resurrection raised Jesus from the dead, now is raising you under great faith, under you being in the spirit. And the whole key is being in the spirit and under you knowing that because you're in the spirit, because see the mind of your spirit 
context God who is spirit. God's not a mind. God is a spirit. And so the, 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 your spirit man now contacts God in wholeness is loose to you in Jesus' name. Victory, peace, joy, righteousness in Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. I know there's a lot there. That, that's why it's so important to get this CD. I mean, you can contact us really at, at Abba Christian Center. You know, 724-421-5139, 724-794-3794, and we'll get this to you. You need to listen to this message. It's not just the message of Easter for this Sunday. It's a message of life for every day of the year. Glory to God. I know my time's running out. I'm not sure even how much time I have right now, but glory to God. I want to enter into these, oh my gosh, in these last minutes. Glory to God by sharing with you that you are made to rise. You are made to rise, glory to God. One of the main names of God Almighty is the name El Elyon. It's the God who lifts up. It's the God of the upper room. It's the God of resurrection. It's the God who makes you to rise. Hallelujah. Jesus, as we close in these last few precious minutes, if there's anyone listening to my voice, whether you're, you're watching by YouTube, you're watching by Faith and Family Channel, you're watching television, however you're listening or watching, and you've not accepted Christ, don't, don't be foolish. Don't live in your own strength. It will only cause you to enter into the law of sin and death and the destruction now and for eternity. Right now, will you pray with me? Say, God, I ask forgiveness for my pride. I ask for, I repent from my pride. I repent from thinking that I could gain eternal life from my own works. I repent from my sinfulness. And I ask you now, Father, through the blood of Jesus Christ that caused me to be born again through the power of the Holy Ghost so I can live spirit to spirit. If you said that prayer, contact us. Glory to God. My number's on the screen again. You get 724-421-5139, Or write us. Or come to church. That would be better. In Slippery Rock, Gobble Christian Center. But most importantly right now, to you who that are believers, rejoice! Woo! Glory! You're not under bondage to fear again. To fear that you're not going to be healed. To fear that you're not going to overcome that familiar sin. To fear that you're not going to have the finances that you need. To fear that you're not going to be pleasing to God. The fear that somehow you're not accepted by God. The fear that the blood that somehow you, when you ask for forgiveness, it's not enough. No more fear. Because the blood's been shed. Jesus has risen. And the resurrection power within you will bring forth every desire that needs to be met by his resurrection. 